In this video, we're going to look at the Joule experiment. Now, the overall goal of the Joule experiment was to measure the internal pressure of a gas, right? So he was trying to measure the internal pressure, which we saw was de um, defined by this partial derivative, right? du dv at constant t, right? This is our internal pressure. So the Joule experiment's main goal was to try to measure this internal pressure for an expanding gas. So how did he do that? So we have this set up here in the figure on the left. What you see is a uh, double bulb container um, with a valve in the middle and gas particles that are trapped in bulb A, right? Um, and bulb B is actually a vacuum, right? So you evacuate bulb B and you have all of your gas contained in bulb A. This entire setup is set up in a water bath, right? So the, the gas is expanding in this container that's submerged in a water bath that is uh, kept at a constant temperature, right? So before the expansion, thermal equilibrium is established between the bath and the system, right? Now, how do we do the gas expansion? Well, basically, you just turn this valve, so it's like a stopcock in the middle of the valve, you turn the valve and you allow the gas to expand from the single bulb A to occupy both bulbs, right? So uh, initially, the gas is only occupying the volume of bulb A, right? But when we actually do the expansion, the gas will be able to occupy VA plus VB. Right, where VB is the volume in container B and VA is the volume in container A. Right, So you basically do a free expansion from uh, bulb A to both bulbs when you open up uh, the valve. Right, So, um, so now we got to think, okay, we've done this expansion. How does this relate to the internal pressure? Well, if you think about two equations that you can get for du, we can make sense of this, right? So first we have the total differential of du, right? So we know that du is equal to du dt at constant v dt plus du dv at constant t dv. Right, so now this is the derivative that we're after, right? This internal pressure derivative is what we're trying to measure. We can also have another expression for du uh, from the first law of thermodynamics, right? So we'll have du is equal to dq plus dw, right? So what we can do is set these two expressions equal and start to see what happens uh, with our expression and how we can isolate the internal pressure based on the conditions of our experiment. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. So we can set those two equal to each other. So let's do that. So we have du is equal to dq plus dw. And that's going to be equal to du dt at constant v dt plus du dv at constant t dv, right? So thinking back to our physical problem here, right? If we have initially in the Joule experiment, if we have a, a vacuum in B, a vacuum, which is just, you know, free space, an evacuated container, cannot exert pressure. Right? It can exert pressure on this gas. And our work, keep in mind that our, our work is negative P external dV right? for an expanding gas. Well, if there is no external pressure being applied to your gas, then you're doing a free expansion. And for a free expansion, the work done is zero. Right, so that's the first simplification that we can make down here. We know that uh, the work is going to be zero, so we can go ahead and get rid of that term. So we know that all of this on the right-hand side is just going to be equal to dq. 
du dt constant v dt plus du dv at constant t dv. Okay, so now the one thing that we need to know from what uh, Joule actually measured, right? So when he did this expansion of a gas, uh, he measured, he was measuring the temperature change in the bath. He actually measured a temperature change of zero. So there was no temperature change, right? So this is what he measured. His uh, grand result here was that there was no temperature change when the gas expanded, right? So what does that mean for us down here? Well, it means that dt, since dt is zero, that term goes away, right? So dq is just going to be equal to your internal pressure. dv right so now we've gotten down to this simplified expression now the other thing that we need to realize here from this uh, temperature change being equal to zero since the only things that are involved here are your system the expanding gas and the water bath being the surroundings right if dt is equal to zero that means that there was no heat transfer between the two systems in our universe the system and the surroundings in our universe so that also means that dq is going to be equal to zero as well, right? So now we can go back down here and we know that dq is going to be equal to zero. So we know that this whole thing on the right hand side, this internal pressure term, is just zero. Okay, so now Joule has gotten down to this point, right, where he knows he's controlled everything in his experiment to where um, he's measured no temperature change. So this term went away. Right. Uh, so when he, since he since he measured no temperature change, that guy went away since he knew he was doing a free expansion. This term went away. And since there was no temperature change and the only things in this uh, universe were the gas expanding and the water bath surroundings, we knew that DQ was also zero. Right. So now we're down to these two terms. Right. We only have these two terms. We know that it's equal to zero. Right. Uh, in these conditions. Uh, but we have to deduce, you know, which one is likely equal to zero. Now, what we know is that an expansion happened, right? So we know for sure that dV is not equal to zero, right? We know for sure that we did an expansion. We expanded the gas from uh, one bulb to occupying two. So there definitely was a volume change. So that means that this internal pressure must be equal to zero, right? So the internal pressure term, du dV, must equal zero. This was the grand result from the Joule experiment. And so basically this concluded that internal energy only depends on volume and it does not depend, uh, only depends on temperature and does not depend on volume. So internal energy, only depends on temperature, not on volume, right? So in, in words, this was the, the big conclusion from the Joule experiment. Now, we know that for an ideal gas, this is exactly true, right? We looked at the internal pressure for an ideal gas and showed that, you know, just by definition, it is zero, right? But what Joule was saying here is that this, what we know for an ideal gas, also carries over to a real gas in a real experiment, right? Now, there were a few flaws in this Joule experiment. And uh, in the next video, we're going to discuss an improved version of this experiment called the Joule-Thompson experiment uh, that looks more or less at this expansion again in a more rigorous way. And we'll see if they come to the exact same conclusion or something different.